So before Animal Planet was dominated by really shitty reality television, there was a weird phase in which they would put on mockumentaries about supernatural things. The earliest I can recall was Animal Planet's The Last Dragon, which was like walking with dinosaurs, but instead of dinosaurs, it had dragons, and it portrayed them as if they actually existed within history. Now, all this mockumentary supernatural garbage would culminate into Animal Planet's more infamous Mermaid, The Body Found, which was released in 2011. However, between these two blatantly fictional pieces of media disguising themselves as reality, Animal Planet released a found footage show known as Lost Tapes. And what better time to discuss a bad found footage horror show than during the month of October, right? I mean, look, I'm out here in the middle of the fucking woods. This is very real. This isn't fake. Now, Lost Tapes wasn't particularly frightening. Maybe frighteningly bad, but not scary by any means. However, when it aired in 2008, many children and stupid people believed Animal Planet was actually showing them real people getting mauled by paranormal entities. Now, I was like 14 when I first saw this show, and it was the first episode, the Chupacabra episode, and I was very much unfazed and unfrightened. I did, however, like the idea of Lost Tapes, exploring the idea that cryptics may exist through these short encounters, fictional or otherwise. I've always enjoyed a good spooky story, so my teenage brain said, Lost Tapes good. And it is most certainly not. Trust me, it is, it's not good. It reminded me a lot of that show on Discovery, A Haunting, which also was a horror television show with bad reenactment centering around paranormal activity. However, the major difference was Lost Tapes used found footage for its narrative, with experts sprinkled in throughout the episodes while A Haunting just had people tell their story as bad acting occurred in the background. Lost Tapes had some credibility with younger audiences since the found footage aspect made it more believable and feel more real. And as children, they really couldn't discern what good or bad acting was, so I really don't blame people for saying they thought this show was real when they were children. They also try and convince the viewer by bringing in quote-unquote experts on the subject who will drop exposition on the monster and its real-world counterpart. So, for instance, in the vampire episode we'll be talking about in just a minute, they have biologists talk about how real-world animals like ticks, leeches, and vampire bats survive on eating nothing but blood. They do this to try and trick small children idiots into believing vampires are real and to make their show more convincing. It'd be really easy for me just to shit on the show relentlessly, but I'm going to use the ever so great resource IMDB to watch the top rated episodes to show that I'm going into this with good faith. Now, fair warning, this show is found footage and is incredibly low budget. It's got bad acting, shaky cam, and loud noises. Also, all the episodes I found were for free on YouTube and in 360p, so it's not going to be HD. I'm sorry, but I'm not paying Amazon $2 an episode for this garbage. Anyways, let's begin. Do you believe? Lost Tapes. Vampire. Okay, so the top two rated episodes on IMDb were Vampire and Strigoi Vampire. Then it would feel kind of redundant to show you two different vampire episodes in one video, so I'm just going to show you the highly rated vampire episode. The episode starts with a man getting mauled at a gas station with bad voice acting from a news reporter, stating that this footage is disturbing. No, it's really not that disturbing, actually. We're then introduced to the characters of this episode. Mom, Dad, and their son named Eddie. I only learned his name since both parents say it a lot. Because of recent financial strain, the family has bought the Spencer Mansion and the boy doesn't seem to like it here. This house doesn't work! No. Like I said moments ago, the acting in the show is really bad and the dialogue doesn't get much better. They struggle to get into their house and I am reminded of when I lived in a creepy old house with a non-functioning front door as well. Yeah, no, I'm being serious. Our front door was bolted shut by a landlord's terrible paint job. Not a fucking vampire. The boy tries to settle in, but something spooky is happening until mom shows up and installs a camera to spy on her son. The scariest part about this episode so far is that a grandma trusted this little shit with an expensive camera. My immersion is completely ruined. As they leave the room, the door slams shut, and I am certainly unspooked by these events. The trope of the door mysteriously opening and closing has never been particularly effective since I've seen it in every single low-budget film imaginable. And unfortunately, Lost Tapes' best episode is falling right into these bad tropes I hate. I will say that this shot here reminds me a lot of Paranormal Activity. Good or bad, take that as you will. This show did air between 2008 to 2010, so this would have been around the time Paranormal Activity would have been taking off. I doubt the shot was inspired by Paranormal Activity since the timeline doesn't quite line up, but there were dozens of 2000s found footage films that came out pre-Lost Tapes that likely inspired this shot. 
but Paranormal Activity was the first film that came to mind. Anyways, a vampire comes out of the closet and no, that's not a gay joke. Now, credit where credit is due, this is actually kinda spooky, so good job, Lost Tapes. You're building tension like a real horror film should. Now, the mom of the family is actually concerned because she found the boy's teddy bear ripped in half, but Papa John doesn't give a single fuck. He suggests that Eddie should work with him on the house because he loved it as a kid, and Eddie will like it too. Now, I'm kind of with mom on this one, considering that she's actually worried about her son having an intense psychological break since he had a nightmare and ripped his favorite bear in half. But you know, a little hard work does the mind wonders. Who needs, who needs psychological aid? Just work out. So Billy the Exterminator shows up and is looking for whatever is bumping around in the walls in the house. Eddie meets him and the Exterminator explains what a snare pull is, meaning it should surely be a part of the plot and it's just not pointless filler dialogue, right? Right? Wrong. Anyways, the exterminator gets got. Rip Bozo. Rest in piss. Now, I will admit, the snake cam wiggling around on the walls is actually kind of tense. It's not terrifying or anything, but it's building tension up nicely. So good job again, Lost Tapes. You're actually pacing yourself properly. Later, the family is all together, and the mom drops this terrible line. Did the exterminator come back? That's a terrible line read. You couldn't just ADR a better take? I mean, my voice lines suck too, so I guess I'm really in no place to judge, am I? The point of the scene was to split the family up, and with Billy... Si Wait, I said Billy? I wrote Billy here. His name's Eddie. Fucking Christ, I'm getting my characters mixed up! The point of the scene was to split the family up with Eddie going to the basement. Now, I'm actually kind of shocked, but this is, again, kind of a tense scene. The atmosphere is actually really nice and then jump scare. However, I can't help but notice the weird editing where it plays a bunch of sounds, and one of them happens to just sound like a fart noise. Seriously, take a listen. <laughs> Why is there a weird fart noise here? Did the kid shit himself? Did I shit myself? Did the vampire shit itself? Like, I'm not crazy, am I? There's a weird out of place fucking fart noise here. Like someone just tooted. It killed the tension for me. I started laughing when I was watching this. God, fucking weird audio. Anyways, the vampire chases him upstairs and the whole family is here to try and stop it, but they just run around the house and there's shaky cam and I can't tell what the fuck is going on and they all just run to the son's room. The vampire starts to break in, but don't worry. Daddy's here. He knocks the block off a of Nosferatu and the day is saved. No, seriously, that's how it ends. He just fucking punches him in the face and that's it. Like, GG's. Knocked his block off. Get fucked, vampire. So as far as cheap found footage goes, this is certainly that. I'm really, really, really hesitant to call it good simply because it really doesn't go anywhere or have anything to say. But if you're looking for a cheap little scare, it's, it's alright, I guess. And you could do a lot better. It built tension pretty well at times, and even got me with a jump scare. Unfortunately, it sort of just devolves into shaking cam, becoming difficult what's going on, and the low quality of this very legal upload is making it even more difficult. It also just sort of ends too with no resolution or anything. Overall, it's... fine. A little disappointing for the most highly rated episode in the series, and it can only go downhill from here, folks. So let's go. Wendigo, American Cannibal. Up next, we've got the Wendigo, or as white people say, Wendingo. Now, the Winnebago comes from Native American folklore and stems from the idea that people should not be greedy and share with the neighbors in the harshest winters, lest they starve and resort to cannibalism. Now, is that a very general idea, an origin of the Wendigo that may not fully represent the beliefs of the several cultures that believed in it? Yes, because superstition varies from culture to culture, and we'd be here all day if I started getting into the nuances of the Wendigo between the different regions of tribes. We're not here for that. We're here to shit on a found footage show that happens to feature the Wendigo. So Lost Tapes, what do you got? We start off with a group of campers who've gotten themselves lost in the woods and are clearly desperate for food as one of the campers offers up a squirrel. Dude, we're lost, but we're not animals. My brother in Christ, you just established you're lost and hungry. You can cook the fucking squirrel. You're not an animal. Animals can't cook. And if you want to get technical, you are an animal in the literal sense. Fuck you and your mother, I don't like this episode and we're only a minute in. Now, I'm gonna say it now, I don't find the supernatural all that scary. My taste in horror tends to lean towards more grounded stories as I find it more frightening if something can actually happen. I would have preferred it if we got Matthew going mad and chasing his friends around the woods with an axe trying to eat them, which kind of happens, but we don't really get to see that. Yes, his name is Matthew and he becomes a Wendigo. Matthew the Wendigo. I'm not kidding. The story is mostly told through the eyes, or rather lenses, of the rescuers who are sent to find the campers two weeks later. 
Now this approach could also be good as it could have the rescuer slowly unraveling the horrors of cannibalism, kind of like the real world investigators uncovering the cannibalism surrounding the lost HMS terror in Erebus in Northern Canada. But we don't get that. It'd be too interesting. See, kids and stupid people don't understand horror unless there's blood, gore, and loud noises with a big ghoul running at the camera. We can't have a slow, terrifying mystery unfold in front of these characters. Well, considering they can't act, it might be for the best we didn't get that, huh? Anyways, the rescuers find the camp, and one guy calls out for April's name like he's bored as hell. April! Like, at least the other two are trying. They find evidence of blood at the campsite and try to radio base, but they can't reach base. They send the new guy, Dorsey, to fill their canteen at the river and continue looking around. Just as Dorsey starts to return, he finds some weird objects hanging in a nearby tree. It cuts back to the other two rescuers, and they find a dead body like 10 feet away from the campsite, with a small piece missing out of its leg. They realize something bad is about to happen to our boy Dorsey, and on cue, Dorsey gets got by the ghoul. Now this is stupid for two reasons. One, the body is like 10 feet away from the campsite, and two, it's completely untouched minus like one piece missing from the leg. They clearly did not look around or investigate the camp very well when they arrived, which just makes them horribly incompetent rescuers. What if someone was in the tent dying and they couldn't respond? Well, sucks to be them because this dumb bitch, dumbass, and Dorsey would have just left them there to die. Now, I also think it's bad that the body is barely touched. If there's a Wendigo running around, it shouldn't have violently tore that body apart and ate all the meat it could since they're, you know, ravenously hungry all the time? Nah, he just, just a piece of his leg is missing. You know, it's, it's not a big deal but it kind of deflates the presence of a deadly cannibal when it just leaves entire bodies laying out in the open like this. Anyways, time passes, and they're still looking for the missing rescuer. They stumble into a cave where they find the last remaining survivor of the campsite. We get a flashback in the form of more found footage from the campers, where we see a woman with a protruding bone, and I'll admit, it kind of got me. I used to be a psychopath cool with all sorts of gore, but now that I'm an adult with empathy for my fellow man, I really just don't like gore in films and TV shows. They're, it's icky, gross, get it away. We also see Matthew trying to persuade his friends that this bitch is gonna be dead, so they should just eat her now. Like, dude, wait for her to fucking die first, at the very least. Anyways, one of the rescuers ends up leaving the cave and gets jump scared by an unimaginative generic looking Wendigo, leaving the two women now. And of course, the Wendigo has magic voice powers and calls out for the lady rescuer to leave. Being a white woman, she leaves the cave and to no one's surprise at all, it's the Wendigo. And he starts to enter the cave, but it's dark and low quality, so I don't know what the hell's going on. They end up running away and the lady rescuer finds Dorsey and his face looks like ground beef. She dies and the last remaining camper cries into the camera and she also dies. And the narrator states that it was a black bear attack and not an axe murdering, which I mean, hey... You had a dude running around in the woods with an axe. You could have literally just said that there was an axe murdering guy out in the woods. That would have been so much easier than to frame it as a black bear attack, considering the bones would have been, you know, chopped by a fucking axe. All right, this episode is pretty bad. I think watching the lost campers fall into madness would be more interesting as a concept and follow the folklore a little better. But we got children to jump scare, and they don't understand folklore or psychological horror, so just throw a deer skull and a spooky hand on a camera. That'll get them. Okay, you know what? It actually kind of did jump scare me a little bit. I'll, I'll give you props. It spooked me. I would have preferred not knowing or just having a vague idea of what happened to the campers if we're going to follow the rescuer's perspective. Imagining the horror that fell onto the campers would have been so much more gruesome than just seeing Matthew vaguely suggest cannibalism before eating a dude. Zero out of ten, Matthew can eat my whole fucking ass. Okay, so I looked at two of the more higher rated episodes of the series, so I get to pick a bad one now. And that bad one I have chosen is Lizard Man. Why the Lizard Man, you ask? Because it sounds kind of funny and Lizard Men are cool in Warhammer, so this guy has to be at least something cool, right? Lizard Man. No, he's 200% not cool. This episode opens up with a fake 911 call about a woman's dog getting eaten, and there's, there he is. There's the Lizard Man at the very, very start. Anyways, this raggedy old bitch's cat got pulled into a storm drain by something and the fire department shows up to save a cat named Mr. Smithers and the local news station is here to document it because it was a slow news day or something. So they go into the sewer and walk around only to find a dead cat. It isn't Mr. Smithers because they still hear a cat meowing deeper into the sewer. The lady firefighter rushes ahead to get the cat while the male firefighter is going to escort the news team out. However, lady firefighter starts screaming and the man rushes in to save her, leaving the film crew on their own. Being a white woman, the reporter decides she's going to stay in the sewer and catch whatever's on film. 
But she and the cameraman get mauled by the lizard man and die. No, seriously, they just get mauled off camera. The male firefighter finds his partner who was only lightly mauled since she only has a cut on her face. So it's likely infected considering she was laying on the sewer floor? Like, that's fucking disgusting. Any anyways, who cares? She fine, she's fine. Everyone's fine. They walk back, but they can't connect to base because they're in the fucking sewer. They find the dead news crew and they realize they've got to get out. Not before we interject with some real world factoids about the lizard man brought to you by your local cryptozoologist. I think one of the most scary aspects of this creature is that it's so alien. Uh, not that I'm saying it's from outer space, but it's so different. We have to be open to all theories. We have to look at nuclear power plants, um, occult rituals, uh, aliens. My man, stop. You have to understand this does not sound good. This is the opposite of good. You sound bad. Stop. Please stop. What if people are misidentifying an algae-colored Bigfoot? Why is an algae-covered Bigfoot more believable than a lizard man? This is why people laugh at cryptozoologists. You're all hack frauds with no actual credentials. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Please, shut up. Anyways, this episode ends with the male firefighter going all macho on the lizard man and knocking his block off. No, that's, that's not a joke, by the way. He literally says he's going to fight it, and he does. Okay, this is really dumb. Like, I don't know if I have to say that. I don't know if I have to say it's dumb or not. It, it kind of just speaks for itself. Like, we're showing fake news footage of a woman's car with her saying the lizard man did it. And there are huge holes in this car. And I'm expecting to believe that a fucking firefighter just kicked the shit out of a lizard man? No. No. This episode sucked. You might have noticed this section was also, like, much, much much shorter than the other two and that's because there's really nothing to talk about i'm not i'm not kidding nothing happened here they just go into the sewer and there's some noise and that's it the only interesting thing was listening to the fucking cryptozoologist go off the rest of it just fucking boring now this wasn't the worst rated episode mind you that one belongs to the mongolian death worm the more aggressive cousin to the alaskan bull worm and i don't think it could survive watching an episode worse than this for context, by the way, this Lizard Man episode is in the middle of the pack of the 35 episodes. Funny thing is, I thought this episode was okay until I started writing and realized nothing fucking happened. Fuck you, Lizard Man. You fucking suck. Green Goblin was a better villain. Fuck you. Fight me. Among Us. While I think the vampire episode was pretty okay, the other two episodes were pretty awful. The scariest part about Lost Tapes is that it had three seasons, and I'm pretty sure it just coasted on the popularity of found footage films of the 2000s. As someone who does enjoy trashy horror films and cryptid stories, I am very disappointed. From my viewing alone, I got excited at first when the vampire episode wasn't terrible. However, I really shouldn't have considering it was the best rated episode in the series and it was only okay in my eyes. Now everyone has different tastes, sure. But if most of the episodes are anything like the lizard man i i don't want to watch any more of this i think what also kills my interest is that they don't do anything with a narrative or use the monsters in any sort of creative or symbolic way family and financial strain encountering a vampire starts to sound like something until you realize they don't do anything with that dynamic but run around the house and scream feeling as though you've lost your humanity by becoming a cannibal in order to survive no, let's not do anything with that. Let's just put a guy in a cheap costume and have him jump out. And I don't even know what the lizard man is a symbol for. Fucking Alex Jones? Fuck, I don't know. Moon Men? I know not every show has to set out to be something artistic or say anything of value. It's okay for things to just be trashy entertainment, but Lost Tapes really isn't fun or entertaining. Maybe if I got drunk, I guess I could have enjoyed the bad acting. And I'm sure it would be scary as hell if I ate an edible, but Lost Tapes is just trash programming from a shitty cable network that doesn't even bother to claim its own shitty show on YouTube at this point. Anyways, did you ever watch Lost Tapes? What are your thoughts on it? Make sure to like and subscribe and you know what? No. Fuck this fake engagement shit. I don't care. You don't care. No one fucking cares. I'm not shilling for this. Anyways, thanks for watching. Happy Halloween, unless it's not Halloween, in which case, happy whatever fucking holiday is for you. 
uh fuck the lizard man fuck you fuck your mother i'm out see you next time which is gonna be in like 12 months goodbye